afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Acumatica webinar. My name is Mara Kadimer, a marketing coordinator here at Action Associates. Now, let me introduce you to our presenters today, Gib Underdown and Chris Poleg. I will let them tell a little bit more about themselves, and then they'll get to the content. Go ahead and take over, guys. Hey, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, I'm Gib Underdown. I'm a senior account manager with Action Associates. I've uh, been with Action for quite some time, uh, in, involved with Acumatica since uh, we started the process. Uh, I'm going to turn my camera off. I just want to get a chance to introduce myself only to save some bandwidth here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is take you through a brief overview of Action and Acumatica, and then I'm going to turn it over uh, to Chris Holway. So we've got a little presentation, just a little bit about who we are. Uh, our agenda today after we uh, do the uh, Action Acumatica overview is Chris is going to perform an Acumatica demo, and then we'll wrap up with question and answers. So a little bit about who we are. Uh, we've got 240 plus employees been in business since 1979. We're a top 20 value added reseller in the, uh, in the United States and uh, have won numerous awards, including a top workplace award. Uh, just a little bit about us, our expertise in the industry. Uh, we've been in the construction um, industry since our inception with various uh, products that we've grown through, uh, including Acumatica. So we've got a team of experts that know the business, that know the market, uh, that know Acumatica. And really uh, what we look to do is, is uh, implement new ERP implementations, end-to-end -end solutions with current technology. We have a lot of partnerships with what we refer to as uh, ISVs or independent software vendors that add extra value to Acumatica. And then we support Acumatica on an ongoing basis. Acumatica is sold and implemented exclusively through their partners. So a little bit about, uh, about what we do. We have a construction edition, which we're talking about today. I always like to highlight that there's other additions, and these are modules that you can mix and match within Acumatica if need be. We're finding our industry is our, our division is called multi-industry, and we're finding that there are construction companies that do some manufacturing. So just to give you a background on that, I just want to put that out there. Um, as far as our within uh, the Acumatica infra, or, uh, ecosystem, we're the, one of the largest bars in North America. Uh, we're a top, if not the top, construction uh, partner within the Acumatica community. And uh, we're currently managing 20 Acumatica pre-go lives right now and have implemented well over 250 uh, customers. So one of the things that we do, we've got a team of 50 focused Acumatica sales and, and services professionals. Uh, really, the, uh, we've got a catalog of over 20 of those ISVs that I had mentioned. And then we do other things like uh, file migrations, business intelligence, platform integration, data file conversions, workflow automation, and any type of customizations. Acumatica can be customized specifically to fit your needs if it doesn't do it out of the box. A uh, little bit that we off also offer is what we call our lean implementation uh, methodology. And really what it is, it's to reduce the time period to go live. Um, it is looking for anything that's out of scope. It's to help streamline your business processes with our uh, understanding of construction and Acumatica and also best practices. You have executive sponsorship as well throughout the whole process with our executive team and yours. And really the bottom line, what we wanna provide you out of this is what we call um, uh, as, a, as a net promoter score. We want you to recommend Action and Acumatica to your peers. So it's very sequential. These are the steps that are involved. We set up a project with each one of these steps. I won't go into detail, but we set up a project as part of our estimate and we budget to those, pro uh, those projects. Things like data file conversions, uh, conference room piloting, where we'll run through a day in the life of your business using Acumatica. And then at that point, we can do any uh, tweaks of things like reports or workflows, notifications, things of that sort. And then we progress you through the process and take you to a go live and a post live support. So now I'm gonna focus my attention over to Acumatica. Uh, the real key here that I wanna highlight is that Acumatica was born in the cloud. Uh, was uh, brought out in 19, or excuse me, in 2008, and it was designed and built for the cloud. So it's not an old legacy application. Every screen you're going to see today with Chris will be its own URL. Uh, it's its own web page, and also has that capability of interfacing through what we refer to as application program interfaces or APIs. So with that, obviously you get high availability, you get remote collaboration. All you really need is a browser to connect to Acumatica and you have security built in as well. Acumatica runs not only on uh, Amazon's web servers, but also on Microsoft's Azure platform as well. And the security on that is extremely high. 
So once again, I made mention of these different industries. We're going to highlight the construction edition today. And really within the construction edition are things like construction financials, job cost accounting, payroll. Those are payrolls an option. Project management is another option. Uh, subcontract capability, retainage, and even property management is an option. Also within our financials, you get a full suite of accounts receivable, accounts payable, and general ledger that comes standard with Acumatica. And things that could be optional is if you have multiple companies, things like intercompany accounting, uh, fixed asset management, uh, bank feeds we also handle, and even AP document recognition, where you can bring in a, an AP document on a PDF format and optically character recognize that and create an AP voucher. Within project accounting, budgeting and cost tracking, uh, revenue recognition, change orders, commitments, approvals, all are built into the accounting, uh, the, the project uh, accounting module as well. And Chris will highlight some of those today. Within also Acumatica, we have a full suite of uh, CRM applications, customer relationship management, and you can create uh, a pipeline and take those all the way through uh, and create a project right out of your CRM quote uh, is another option that some people like to do using the CRM module. And also, as I mentioned earlier, payroll. We, Acumatica has its own payroll, and it includes union and certified payroll as part of the, the uh, application. Field service is also something we find within the uh, construction um, folks that some people have a field service where they're uh, dispatching people for warranty and repair work, routing uh, of those people as well. That's a full service uh, field service module. This is a, a, just a one screen that talking about technology within Acumatica, and really it's what's referred to down here at the bottom, which is the XRP platform. And it's a platform that Acumatica created. It's a tool set that create, created all the applications within Acumatica. But also things that live below that line are single sign-on capability, the mobile applications. Uh, we also have uh, what we refer to as low code and no code framework, where you can make changes to screens in Acumatica where you do not have to have any programming uh, or, or, or uh, interface like that. You can change the look and feel of your screens. You can change the, the colors, the fonts, the, or the orders of how you want to present, and that's all user defined. Also dashboards, business intelligence live here as well, as well as all the uh, inherent security. So the one thing I like to highlight here is that Acumatica is the fastest growing ERP uh, over the last eight years within the industry, which is the mid-market industry. And uh, the net promoter score, really why I'm highlighting this, is Acumatica has a plus 32. Acumatica surveys their customers twice a year, and that survey uh, reflects the satisfaction within Acumatica. So if you look at net promoter score out in the industry, generally people in the ERP industry, somewhere between zero and 10. So Acumatica is high off the scale with well over 10,000 customers worldwide. So just some uh, examples of those ISVs I mentioned earlier, people like Procore and ProS, uh, Asite, Avalara, uh, people that interface within Acumatica that add extra value. And as I made mention, there's over 270 of those. So within the focus of Acumatica, customer-wise, Acumatica has two different ways they sell the product. One is a small business edition, which is either a five or a 10 named user solution, all the same application, or the ability to have unlimited users and the unlimited users are based upon consumption. And you look at a, a business generally in construction, it's AP uh, invoices that you process. We take whatever the highest one of those is on a monthly basis, be it a purchase order, an AP uh, document, a sales order, a, a AR statement. There's eight major ones, as I may mention, AP documents. And we fit you into the correct size of the environment from a performance standpoint. And we don't care how many users you have that need to access Acumatica. So it's a totally different way of licensing where you don't have to buy per user. And as you grow, you have that expandability. So the other thing Acumatica creates are two major releases every year. And the nomenclature is the year in release one spring and release two in fall. We're now in 2024 release two. And these are major releases. So that's a benefit to you where you are continuously getting the enhancements and improvements. Uh, also included with Acumatica is the Acumatica Open University, where you can self to, uh, do self-tutorials and self-learning. It helps greatly in reducing your cost of implementation, and you become certified in various areas that you want to uh, enroll in. So included also is the community, and that's uh, community.acumatica.com. Go out and take a look. But this is where the developers, Acumatica resources are out there, the partner channel 
Acumatica employees, developers, whatever it may be. You can go out and find answers, post questions. This is also where you can put in suggestions for enhancements and releases. It's a really thriving community uh, to help keep you engaged and, and help answer questions you may have. But, and I'm gonna end right here with what we refer to as the customer bill of rights. And really uh, with clear fee structures, this is what Acumatica delivers with their solutions. Unlimited users, we've mentioned, um, the ability to customize, you can customize Acumatica. Uh, no long-term commitments. Acumatica is an annual renewal subscription, uh, which is very nice. Uh, also, the other nice thing is you can deploy either in the public cloud, Amazon or Microsoft, or even a private cloud. You could have it re reside on your own server. Uh, APIs, those application program interfaces. What you'll see today with Chris is that every screen basically is an is a, a application program interface. So people like Avalara that may need to add sales tax have easy access to interface into. Uh, security is inherent, and we'll talk about that during the demonstration as well. Uh, along with the data that you have is your own data. It's portable. If you decide you wanna move along, you can take your data with you. There's no cost to do that. And as I mentioned, the community and the, and the Open University are part of that. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. Chris is gonna uh, do a demonstration and show you the actual application of Acumatica. And then as I mentioned earlier, we'll wrap up with question and answers. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Gib. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Chris Holwick, as Gib mentioned. I'm one of the solution engineers here at Action Associates. Uh, my background is, is uh, predominantly within the engineering and construction space, uh, and, and more specifically to, to project management and several different uh, roles within, uh, within project management over the course of my career, uh, and have a lot of experience with uh, systems and platforms uh, like Acumatica. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen for you here. Cut my camera for a minute. And we're going to take you through um, the Acumatica Construction Edition. <clears throat> so, uh, so out of the box, as Gib mentioned, Acumatica is a true cloud-based solution. Uh, so come at it from your favorite browser. Uh, and then, in, in reality, all that uh, you know means is that um, as long as you've got an internet connection, uh, any device, any location, anywhere in the world, uh, you can gain access into Acumatica. Um, as you come into Acumatica, uh, this is a typical landing page. So we're looking at a dashboard specifically here for a project manager. Uh, and so one of the first things to highlight about the uh, Acumatica platform is that it is a role and permission based platform. So basically what that means is depending upon the role that you play and the permissions that you've been granted uh, will dictate what you can see and what you can do. Uh, so this is just an example of something that maybe your project managers might land on or start their day with here. Now, um, out of the box, there are uh, many different dashboards available to you here uh, for, for different roles, and, and they're generally role-specific. Uh, so just by way of an example here, uh, this is a little bit more financially focused view of the world for someone like maybe your controller within your organization here. Um, so really the point being is that uh, as long as we're capturing the data, uh, we can then uh, render that or display that information to you uh, back into a uh, dashboard of, of some type. Now, anytime you navigate away from your home page, like I just did, as long as you click on the logo here, it'll take you back to where you started your day. So very simple navigation as you're going to see throughout the, the demonstration here today. Uh, and I'm also going to point out some of that um, uh, uh, usability that that low code, no code framework that Gib mentioned uh, provides you, right? And what that allows a, a user to do in terms of streamlining their workflow. So uh, Acumatica is a multi-entity, multi-currency solution. So what that means is, as you can see here, I've got a couple different companies set up within my uh, demo environment here, as well as a couple branches within some of those uh, companies. So the point being is that um, Acumatic can, can certainly scale and grow with you as you grow your business. So there's lots of flexibility there for you uh, in terms of how you structure things. Now, just coming back to this dashboard here, um, again, like I said, it's, a, it's meant to be a starting point uh, for a given role. Uh, and really, as you go through the process uh, of implementing, right, we will help you define exactly uh, what these things need to be or what information is, is uh, pertinent to your particular organization. 
Um, now, the, the concept here again is, is, is just that, right? So any of the data uh, that exists within Acumatica, we can render that for you here in the form of a dashboard. So this is just an example of some of that. You're seeing some KPI indicators here that are kind of threshold driven. Uh, so the, you know, the, the colors matter, <laughs> excuse me. So as we go through those thresholds, things can go from green to yellow to red, et cetera. Again, just a quick visual indicator letting you know that there's something that might require your attention. So as you scroll through here, you can see that there's you know, different information that they can pull forward here. Uh, and that's really the key is that we can grab data from across the system, not just project information, but other data, maybe financials, purchasing, um, <clears throat> you know, other aspects, excuse me, of the system uh, and bring that data forward here for uh, that individual to consume. Now, as you're reviewing the information in here, uh, we can drill into any of this. So as I click into a graph here, for example, that'll drill me down into the underlying information behind that. So I'll just clicking on my open RFIs there and you can see it took me to not only the open R RFIs, but, but filtered that down for me, right? So if I pop back over here to my, here's all my RFIs that I've currently got in the system, right? And that just drilled me directly into just the open um, RFIs. So again, lots of flexibility for you there. Um, these are just filters that can get saved. So this, what you're looking at here is a typical generic inquiry within Acumatica. So this is a way that we, we kind of pull the data from the, uh, from the database. Uh, and then you can play with the columns here. You've got flexibility to organize things how you see fit. You can select columns, move them over to the right, move them up and down, <clears throat> excuse me, organize them uh, in a way that makes sense or remove information if it's not necessary uh, and you don't want to see it there. Uh, so again, you can dr quickly drill down, uh, and then from there, if I want to see, <clears throat> excuse me, any particulars about this uh, in actual RFI, um, it'll drill me down to that next layer of detail, and I can see that, you know, here's my question, uh, and so forth, and I can begin to manage that, that process. So the concept here is that we start you high in the information chain and let you drill down into the details to find what you're looking for. So a very powerful uh, way to help manage what's going on with your projects. Now over here on the left-hand side are what we call uh, workspaces within Acumatica. These again are gonna be controlled based on roles and permissions. So depending upon you know, your role, you may or may not see um, on, you know, all of the options available here to you. So again, you've got control over that um, within, uh, within, your, um, uh, within your instance. Now our projects are going to live here within what we call the construction workspace. Uh, and what you're seeing here now is just a collection of all of the different capabilities I have available to me as I begin to manage my projects. Um, things like different transactions that I might be involved with, uh, some different tables and setups, processes that I may run. Here's some of those queries that are available to me here, kind of pre-built from Acumatica to help get at information, uh, forms and reports that are available to you, <coughs> and some setup information. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of a lot of data here. Again, from a day-to-day -day perspective, I might not interact with all of this. So I do have the ability to customize this. And this is where that, that low code, no code kind of stuff starts to come into play. So I can quickly check on or off items that I want to include or view all the time uh, and choose to show those on my workspace here simply by toggling show less or show all. So when I minimize that down, it's just going to minimize down to just the items that I've selected that I want to interact with. If I wanted to get even more streamlined and just kind of work from a single workspace, um, we have what we call favoriting within Acumatica. So that's what the gold stars are that you see here. So as I hover over an item, if I select that star, what that just did was added it to my favorites. So this is just a collection of everything that I've favorited across my different workspaces. So if I wanted to just focus in and work from here, I have the ability to do that as well. So again, lots of different ways to kind of streamline your workflow for you. So I'm gonna jump into our projects. Uh, now this is going to be a, uh, a list of all of our projects that are available to me here. You can see I've got it filtered here and I, I can save filters quickly and easily so I can quickly toggle between maybe projects I've got in the planning stage or my active projects, or if I wanna see everything. Now, again, this is controlled by security, so you're, you, you're, people may or may not see all the projects here, or if I'm a project manager, maybe I only see my projects, uh, things like that. So you can control that. 
Now, as you're reviewing these projects here or any kind of query like that with a, with a large record set, uh, off here on the right, Acumatica also includes what we call side panels. And this allows me to bring up associated information with the underlying table that I'm looking at. So as I'm looking at my projects here, I can start to see other information from across the system that is related to that project. So in this case, here's my drawings log, which lives in our project management module. I'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. Uh, so I can see associated drawings with that or maybe any issues that we might be managing that are associated with that project as well. Um, you know, as RFIs, and we just looked at that from a dashboard, uh, but here's just a different way of getting to, you know, that same kind of information, uh, but bringing it up for you here in the one spot. So again, this is a customizable way or configurable way, I should say, uh, to let the user, again, streamline their, their workflow in a way that works for them. So again, just a great way to quickly see a lot of information on one screen without necessarily having to navigate across the platform. Now, as we come into a project, um, Acumatica um, approached this from this, this concept of a project hub. Uh, and where that comes from is as we engage with, uh, with customers and prospects, one of the most common things that we hear uh, is that you guys have information spread across a host of disparate systems. So there's going to be things in spreadsheets uh, and SharePoint sites and emails uh, and uh, you know other systems and Dropbox sites, things like that. So it can become very unruly uh, and very difficult for your, for your project manager to kind of navigate that uh, and find what they need when they need it. So Acumatica approached it from this hub, which the concept here is to centralize all that information for your project manager into one spot. Now, anytime we come into a, a transactional screen in Acumatica, across the top here, you're always going to have a uh, kind of a header section, if you will. Uh, so some basic information here around the project and who my customer might be, a little description of the project and so forth. And then down at the bottom here, you're going to always have your details around that particular transaction. Now, where this hub idea comes into play is right here in the middle uh, with all these different tabs that you see here, right? So we're gonna be bringing a lot of information, at least financial information around the, uh, about this project uh, into this one spot um, for our project managers to make life easier for them. Now, this screen that you're seeing here, uh, the summary tab, this is just some setup data around how you want this particular project to behave uh, key points here is that I can track my revenue budget and my cost budget at different levels of detail, right? So in this case, I'm just tracking it at a, at a kind of high level here on the revenue side, but on my cost side, I'm going to break it down into a little bit more detail and get down to what we call a cost code level within Acumatica. Uh, and then I've got a host of other settings and defaults that I can control and manage here. Most of this stuff will all be set up in what we call a template. Uh, and as you can see, this project was created from a template. Uh, and within that template, I can choose to define as much information or as little information as I'd like uh, based around the type of work that I do. So I can either um, take the approach of here's the bare minimum that we do in every project, so make that default in, uh, or I can build out a max case scenario, say here's everything that we would ever do, and then scale down from there, uh, or build templates for specific types of of work that I might be doing. Uh, and then as I select those templates when I create the project, a lot of this information is going to default in for you. And so you really don't need to think about it again. Now these next uh, several sets of tabs here are gonna be all around kind of setting the project up from a job cost tracking perspective uh, and just a financial kind of view of the world here. So um, with that, as we come into the tasks level here, um, this is this may be a little bit confusing terminology, but really um, this, this kind of goes hand in hand with your billing. Uh, so you're billing out to your customer, owner, whoever you may be working for. Uh, and you can think here, um, uh, schedule of values. Uh, so if you've got a schedule of values you need to bill back against, you can define that here, uh, or you can break it down by CSI sections as I have in my example here. Um, it could be as detailed here as you want, or as simple as a you know, single line item that's uh, you know due project, right? Uh, up to you and your flexibility there. It could be phases, could be milestones, 
Uh, so lots of different ways you can kind of handle that information. Other key note here is what we call these billing rules. This will drive, oops, sorry, didn't want to do that. This will drive um, how your billing is managed and tracked. So you can define things like progress billing rules or time and material, fixed price, fixed plus, uh, whatever kind of mechanism you're dealing with on that particular contract, uh, you can define those here. And that will determine how billing is ultimately calculated and, and set up. Uh, so we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Now, as I mentioned, we can break up our budget from both a revenue side and the cost side. So if you recall, in this particular project, I decided to just keep it at the same level as my task level. So I haven't broken it down to, into any further detail, uh, but we'll come back to this here in just a moment. On the cost side, I have broken it down into more detail here. So I've gone from kind of that task level that you see here uh, down to a more detailed cost code breakdown. Now, you don't have to do this, right? You can choose to track it at whatever level makes sense. Uh, whatever structures you may have. My example here, my cost code structure happens to be two characters followed by three. Um, this could be whatever you'd like. It's just, just my example set. Uh, and then we further break that down into an account group or really a cost type, right? So labor, materials, uh, equipment, subcontract expenses, travel, other things like that. Uh, whatever you want to define here, you can break it down and track it further. So um, this information, again, can, can come in via template uh, if that's the way you set things up. Uh, if you're estimating your projects, maybe in a spreadsheet or another estimating tool, uh, as long as you can get that out to a flat file, we can import that. Uh, so right here are some flexible tools, your import and export capabilities within Acumatica. So we can quickly suck that information in directly that way. There's some additional automated ways that we can do that as well. If you wanted to uh, automate that all the way up to a fully integrated API as Gib was talking about before. Uh, so lots of flexibility there in terms of how we get this set up. Uh, and then the cost and, and the revenue budget screens are, are very much a spreadsheet look and feel. We find this is the way that most project managers like to consume financial information around their projects. So you're gonna see a sheet here with a host of columns of information here as I scroll to the right. Um, looks like a lot of stuff, but really basically four main pieces of information. First set of columns that you see here are all gonna be around my budget, right? So where am I starting from? And then tracking and managing changes to those over the course of a project, uh, and then reflecting here in a revised budget should those changes be approved. My second set of columns here are gonna be all around my commitments. So as I begin to obligate my project, purchase orders and subcontracts and so forth, uh, those are going to start to light up columns of information here. And just like with the budgets, we can manage changes to those uh, commitments. And as they go through that workflow, uh, you're going to see that, that information uh, reflected here in these additional columns. Then your third set of columns here are gonna be all around actual costs. So as simply as you start to execute the projects and you start to transact and start paying bills and incurring costs, those actual costs are gonna get reflected here in real time. So your project managers always have a real time view of where things stand on their projects. Uh, and then the final sets of columns here are all just gonna be around um, at completion and variance uh, columns and so forth. So you have a flexibility here to use these how you see fit. Uh, to, to kind of align with your process and how you are managing things. Uh, again, just like with some of the other queries here, you have this column configurator. So if this is too much information or we don't use a lot of this, you can simply remove those columns and get this down to what makes sense for you uh, and organize it however you'd like. So uh, anytime I want to review or understand where any of these numbers are coming from, I can always highlight a given line item, given cost code, uh, and then I can drill into any of the transactions behind there. So if I wanted to see where the actual costs were coming from or what have you, or where this commitment is coming from, uh, I can drill into the underlying details and expose and see where those numbers are coming from. So if I wanna see everything, I can go there. If I wanna just focus in on just the commitment side of things, I can just see all my contracts and purchase orders against that specific line item. Right, that we're looking at here. Now back over on the revenue side, um, similar concept, obviously a little bit different columns, different information here, uh, but really the key point here is that this is going to be where you're driving your billing from ultimately. So 
Uh, again, back to those billing rules, depending upon the, the nature of your projects and your contracts, whether they are progress build or time and material, fixed price, whatever they may be. Uh, as you run project billing, uh, it's going to execute those rules and determine what those billing amounts need to be, right? So if it's time and material, it's going to go in, look at all the time, material and expenses and so forth that have hit the project, do whatever appropriate markups need to take place and so forth, calculate that information. Uh, and then we're going to kick out into what we call this kind of uh, invoice section. Now, what's nice about Acumatica is that we can go directly to an invoice uh, or you can invoke what we call this pro forma uh, concept or, or kind of scratch copy, draft copy, if you will. Uh, and this is basically just giving you a chance to review the information here, uh, make sure you're okay with it. Uh, it you know, haven't transacted inside of Acumatica in any way, shape or form here yet. Um, it's just a, way, a chance for you to review it. If it's wrong, information's wrong, delete it, no harm, no foul, go back, correct it, rerun your billing, and you'll just be brought right back to here, right? So you've got a chance to kind of review that. What's also nice about this is that uh, if you work into jobs where uh, you're going to submit your pay app, for example, to to your uh, you know to your customer, um, there's usually some review and negotiation process that might take place there, uh, and that will require some changes, right? So once you've uh, agreed upon those, usually you have to come back and do some corrections and some counting things to fix that. What's nice about this pro forma step is I haven't transacted yet, so again I could come back here, I could have sent this to to my to my uh, to my owner, we've you know, we've reviewed it, we've talked it, I've made some changes, I delete this, go back, fix them, rerun it, send it out, and I'm good to go, right? And I have I don't need to correct anything from an accounting perspective until I actually uh, print out that invoice. Now we do embed this uh, the the uh, typical G702 703 pay app within Acumatica, uh, so there's your 702 sheet followed by your 703. Uh, and what's nice throughout Acumatica here as well, obviously I can print that out. I can email directly from within Acumatica. So if I wanted to just send this right out to my customer, uh, I can even automate that. So I can put that onto an automated schedule that'll take care of all that for me, including uh, the language within my email and send this all out for me automatically. Uh, and then also I can print this out or dump this out to Excel or a PDF form. Uh, so that information is available to me there. Um, if I just needed to go straight to a standard invoice form, I could print something like that out as well. We embed a typical template form, but obviously most people will have their own invoice form, so we can, I'll put the information into that format as well. So as you can see here within my invoices tab on the project, live all the invoicing that has taken place on this project. So I can see both the pro forma draft that we created and then ultimately the actual invoice in the AR transaction that took place over onto into the financial section. And I can drill into that record and see exactly what took place there. So again, my project manager's got visibility into all that information for him or her uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Uh, now the balances tab here, last piece of kind of financial review. Uh, this is a little bit more of kind of a PL view of the project, more an income and expense kind of view. Uh, similar information just broken down into the different cost categories and so forth. Uh, for you to review. So uh, if you're, uh, you know, want to see things summarized a little bit more, this is a great view to kind of look at that as well. All my commitments are going to live here for me as well within the project. So any purchase orders and subcontracts that I create or issue on this project are all going to live here in the log for me here. As you can see, my project manager can create a new purchase order or a new subcontract directly from within their project. Again, that hub concept, letting them live and breathe in one spot. Uh, and so they can go ahead and execute those. And obviously I can drill into those as they commit or obligate those dollars, right? Remember your costs and revenue sheets are gonna get reflected uh, showing that those uh, commitments now live out there. Um, so that's on the commitment side of things. There is a full change management process within Acumatica here as well, if you choose to invoke it. Uh, we do manage both change requests or PCOs, if you will, uh, as well as change orders. Uh, so again, that process is going to live here within Acumatica. Uh, you can initiate these change orders and go through and define the impact to your budgets, uh, put a detailed description in there if you'd like, um, 
link or, or capture any associated change requests. So if I needed to bundle up several of those change requests into a change order, I can do that here simply by selecting any open change orders that are available to me or change requests, sorry. Uh, and then I can start to define the impact to both the revenue side and the cost side. In this case, it's just one line item on the revenue side and likewise on the cost budget side. Uh, if I wanted to include a commitment that might be impacted by this change, uh, I can do that here as well. Um, you don't have to, you can separate those out if you wanted to, uh, just to keep things different. You do have different classifications here of change orders. So this is also how we manage just simple budget moves. So if you wanted to just move some dollars around within your budget from cost category to cost category, uh, you can do a budget modification. Just gives you an audit trail of the fact that you made those changes. So again, we've got a complete history of how things happened over the life of the project. Uh, and again, just different types of change orders that you can uh, uh, manage within, uh, within the process here. Uh, haven't talked much about approval workflows, but all of these processes, whether it's the billing or change order or um, the contracts, purchase orders, all of those can go through what we call an approval workflow. Uh, you can have them route to different folks for review and approval. It could be a single individual, it could be multiples, any or all can review and approve. Uh, once you come off this hold state, uh, it will invoke and kick you into that approval cycle. Those folks can get notified. It might light up one of their dashboard items that they've got an item that requires their review and approval. They could receive a notification on their phone, uh, could be a text message. So the system has full notification capabilities built into it as well. So that's our change order uh, and change management areas of it. We can also track equipment usage on the project. So you can define equipment that maybe you're working on or using on a job. Uh, go ahead and define kind of your, your uh, rates for use of that equipment on the project. Uh, and then we do have our time and expenses module that does tie back into projects. So as you're capturing either individual time uh, or crew times, uh, you can create both uh, crew time cards and, and you know, individual employee time cards, and then also what we call equipment time cards. So that's how we can get that equipment time uh, built back onto the projects as well. So all that information is gonna flow and is integrated back into the cost management of things here. Uh, one last key thing I wanted to point out here from a compliance perspective uh, is that we can manage all of those kind of time sensitive documents. So things like insurance uh, certificates or uh, safety certificates, uh, lien waivers. So if you are uh, subcontracting work, doing that kind of thing, uh, as you uh, process and pay those, those invoices, we can kick out uh, conditional lien waivers. Like you saw with some of the other stuff, those emails can automatically be sent uh, directly back out to your contractor or vendor. Uh, and we begin to track and manage that information here. Uh, as you can see here, there's some soft notifications within the system as well as alerting me to something. As I hover over this, I can see that that document has expired. Uh, anytime you see the little paper clip here uh, next to an item um, highlighted in yellow, means there's a document associated with it. So if I was to drill into that, uh, I can see um, here is the underlying lien waiver that was attached, right? And again, this can be set up to be uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, so if you've got a format that you're using, uh, that would be configured. So the documentation can live right there with that transaction. Uh, if you want to do associate any other documents with the projects, uh, that information is going to live up here in what we call as files. So here's a bunch of other information that I've got associated with the project. I can simply browse to typical browse, find the document, choose to upload it, or you can drag and drop it directly up here into the header section and it'll automatically upload for you. So your documents will live there or directly with the transaction that it's associated with, right? So document management kind of happens and is organized appropriately with the appropriate um, transactions as you go through uh, the system. Now, our project uh, management module is kind of the sister module to uh, the construction piece. Uh, and this is where you saw me go to this here a little bit, but things like our uh, more collaborative processes, so things like RFIs and issues we've talked about, I referenced our drawing logs when I was kind of showing you those side panels, uh, but here's where I can go ahead and define a drawing log. 
I can upload all my drawings here. I can manage them through revision cycles. Uh, we're always going to show you the latest revision of a document. Uh, so you're always going to be working with the latest and greatest. If you have permissions to peel back to a uh, previous revision, you can do that. But again, you've got control over whether or not uh, you want to allow that or not. Uh, so you've got the ability to do that here, uh, as well as photos. So if you're doing job site photos, great use case for our mobile app. So if you're out in the field, uh, maybe doing a walk down of your job site, uh, you're taking progress photos or you notice something, you want to take a picture of it, you can utilize the camera on those devices, snap those pictures and upload them and, and have them organized for you here all in one spot along with the rest of your project information. So your photo logs will live and breathe in here. Uh, we do have a full submittal register as well. So if you have a need to manage submittals, uh, you can upload and define your, uh, your submittal items uh, and manage them through those review cycles. Uh, you can go through as many review and approvals as it takes to get approval. Uh, and so you can continue to cycle those through uh, and manage and control your, uh, your submittal process. Uh, and then last but not least, back here, I mentioned there's a whole host of reporting available to you out of the box. Again, these are meant to be a, a sample set of information. Um, and, you know, they may get you close to what you're looking for, and then you can easily tweak and modify them. So here's just a sample of some, some out-of-the-box kind of reports, just a high-level project performance uh, report here, giving me some visibility into kind of just profitability of the project at this given point in time. Uh, maybe I want to see things broken down by my costs here, my cost code sections a little bit here, or my task level. Again, this may be close to what you want. You can certainly tweak and modify these reports. Um, a lot of them are, are kind of filtered, um, uh, uh, pre-filtered. You have the ability to select certain information, things like that, before you run them. Uh, and then last but not least, here's our project WIP report. So we do fully support that process within Acumatica. Again, our standard WIP report here, this is a multi-project uh, report. Anytime you see a hyperlink like you do here, it means I can drill further into the detail behind it. So it'll link me through. Uh, but I can pull up here, I've got my, my contract amounts, my cost, my commitments, as well as changes that are going on, at completion numbers and profit info, my actual costs, my billings and so forth, my recognized revenue here, and my billings and access or costs and access, and then forecast information. So again, it's our standard out of the box. Um, WIP report might get you close to what you're doing today. Um, you can easily take and tweak this uh, for your needs if you so uh, need to. Uh, and again, you have the ability to share that information out uh, within it, within Acumatica here as well. All that communication here, one last point to make on the project, uh, is that as you review, um, uh, let me get back in here to a project. Uh, any of that communication that is going back and forth uh, as you as you start to email within the system here, and let me just switch back to uh, the project that we were dealing with. Um, that is going to live and breathe here within this activities tab. So all that communication is starts to get tracked here. Any kind of emails, uh, tasks that you might create, meetings that you might hold, phone calls that you had, if you want to keep track of that. Uh, or any kind of quick notes that you want to make about a conversation, things like that. So your your communications and all that collaboration is going to live here within Acumatica, along with the rest of your project information. So with that, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to open it back up to our, our Q and A. Yeah, wonderful presentation, guys. One time we did have one question, um, so let's get to that real quick, and then we'll let everybody get back to their day. Um, one second. Okay, does Acumatica charge third parties for access to APIs? Uh, I'll take that one. Uh, no, they don't. It's a, a total open API solution. And uh, there's documentation that can be shared with anybody that wants to integrate with, with Acumatica. Perfect. That was quick and easy. That was an easy, good, good job. <laughs> Um, with that being said, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. But um, Gib and Chris, thank you so much for your time today. And um, we will see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks so much for attending.